Stephen Hawking once said, so Einstein was wrong when he said, God does not play dice with the universe. Consideration of black holes suggests not only that God does play dice, but that he sometimes confuses us by throwing them where they can't be seen. Hi, I'm Kiana, Kiana Salehi. I was born in a small city in the northern part of Iran called Almud, and uh, I'm a PhD student here at Perimeter Institute, and I'm working on black holes. I think I first realized that I'm very curious about the universe when I was only six years old. You know, those very early realizations. I remember I was uh, closing my eyes, just like pressing it so hard so I can imagine that I'm floating around in the empty space and there are like thousands of stars that are just like passing by me and I'm, I'm just exploring and I'm just like going deeper and deeper within the void. Since then, I wanted to be a person who is exploring and devoting her life to getting to know the universe a little bit better. Poetry was always in my life since the beginning because I grew up in a Persian community and I, I have this vivid memory every year growing up that we were reading poetry every Persian New Year, celebration of the longest night of the year. Every being, every object is a jar full of delight and it's from Rumi. It just it just moved me so much that when you see something, the first thing that you think about is that there is a delight within it, that it's waiting for me to be discovered. I think if you just like move from the very shallow first surface levels of people, you can see the beauty, you can see the, the diamond that it's there within every individual one of us. I, I want to find that in people. That's why I hate chit-chatting with people. That's why I wanna have like a deep conversation with a human. That's why I wanna explore the universe because I know there is a diamond within this universe waiting to be discovered. We have this very long history of astronomers who are coming from a concept of Hakim, which Hakim is a person who has hikmat, and hikmat means a wisdom, which in, in back in the day in, in, in the Persian community, it, was, it wasn't just confined within the, the logical world of scientific world that we have in the Western sense, that it's physics and astrophysics and math. Most of them were also poets. They were devoting their lives in, into poetry and literature as much as devoting their life to astrophysics and math, or some of them even were doctors and poets at the same time. I wanted to be Hakim, which, which has both scientific and the poetic world into it at the same time. Black holes can be described by a surface uh, that is called the event horizon. And the event horizon is a place that nothing, not even light, can escape out of it. And they are very fascinating to explore because the person who came up with the idea and uh, predicted that it might exist in the universe, uh, which was Albert Einstein, immediately said that we can't really see them out there. These are not physical objects. They're just beautiful mathematical things that we just like found out in our papers. But the reason that it's like very hard for people to believe uh, or believe is uh, the fact that inside a black hole there is a monster um, that is called a singularity. And singularities are the point that has infinity within their hearts. The moment that uh, the EHT collaboration published the very first image of a black hole, it was 2019. And I was back home in Iran and I was an undergrad student. I remember the entire 
university was gathered around in our physics department. I remember it was like a huge crowd there. Everyone would like so tightly get together trying to just get a sneak peek of the projector that was showing the, the online press release of it. And that's crazy because that was the first time that I've seen my supervisor there, my current supervisor, but I didn't know him back in the day. And I was like, we are just so blessed to live in the era that human beings are seeing the very first image of a black hole. The crazier part is that it is so crazy to even think that these phenomena exist, that even the person who predicted it for the first time, Albert Einstein 100 years ago, thought that this is not real, this is not physical. Despite the fact that one of the most brilliant people in the whole human history, or what Einstein said that it's probably not physical and probably not there, we actually detected it. I was an undergrad which was so mesmerized by that moment and then three years later I was, I was here and I was a member of this collaboration and I was part of it for the second image and I'm still part of it to explore further and we see we even saw another black hole's very first image which is the black hole of the center of our own galaxy. It genuinely feels like a dream. A dream that can, a fairy tale that did come true, and I, it's beyond words to describe it, I think. So, if I can say there is a poem that reminds me of a black hole, or if I can describe a black hole, could be this poem by uh, Rumi, which used the concept of fano, uh, which is completely being removed or destroyed in this world. Be like a drop and melt in the ocean. A hundred thousand drops will be swallowed up and only the ocean will remain. It's a magnificent part of the world that it seems very majestic in the sense that it seems very quiet. It seems like it knows a lot of information. It holds a lot of information within itself, within its heart, and there are a lot of chaos around it. We have a, a part of Persian uh, poetic world that comes from Sufism, and specifically I think Rumi is one of the most famous Sufis in the world. And uh, the Sufism, they have this secret word that they always use, and it says Khamoshbash, which means be silent. So you know the secret of this universe. And when you know it, you should be silent. What I like the most about researching at PI is the fact that they put all their efforts to bring everyone together. Like you might just like work here, like just walk in a random day, but you see like the giants of the field just randomly walk in the building. We have like Maldacena, Witten, Rafa, all those big figures in the modern physics just casually being a part of this beautiful journey that we're all going through. I think Perimeter Institute makes it even more approachable for us by having a lot of social events that um, helps us to get connected with a lot of great physicists in the world. And even uh, the whole architecture of the building are, is built in a way that you can see people and hear people from different floors and different directions and aspects and parts of the building. And you're like, I can, I can just find them and be like, hey, wait, wait, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you a question. You wait on that floor. I'm coming upstairs, you know? So I think these are the, the whole environment that I would love to be at because you, you get the chance to communicate and explore with your community and the people who are passionate about the same thing as you are. We are explorers of the infinite and the infinitesimal, bound together by a shared curiosity, searching for answers in a universe of questions. Our expeditions investigate space and time, matter and energy, the classical realm and the quantum. Always pushing at the perimeter of science, we stand at the edge of what is known and what is yet to be discovered.
Like those who came before us, the need to explore is what defines us, forever united by our passion for discovery. We can't tell what's over the next horizon or beyond the farthest star, but we know we must search, we must explore. We are explorers. <laughs>